Perfect. So hello everyone and welcome to our session about powerful document automation. So today it will be all about documents because we all have to work with documents on a daily basis. So any business process you can imagine, there's usually a document coming at the end. So imagine you're working in sales and you're closing a deal. What do you have to do? You have to create a quote and you have to send an invoice if you want to get paid. Or imagine if you're working in HR and you're hiring someone, they need to sign a contract. So someone needs to generate a contract. Chances are though, if you are the one that needs to generate those documents and if you don't have a document automation solution in place, it might not be your favorite task to do. Um, luckily, we have a few tips and tricks and we have a solution on how you can actually make document automation be something that you're enjoying, something that's easy and that's automated. And that's what we're here for today. I'm Lisa. I'm Senior Technical Evangelist at Docs42. So I work a lot with document automation and I'm super happy to be joined by my colleague Johannes today. Hi, Johannes. Hi. Thank you, Lisa. Hi, everyone. I'm Johannes Linder. I'm the Lead Technical Evangelist at Docs42. Yeah, and I'm very much looking forward to show you a lot of cool integrations in terms of document automation today. So yeah, prepare to be hopefully amazed. Yes. So, but before we jump in, let's have a look at something else we have for you today. So basically we've been part of dynamic communities for quite some time now. And we have to say that we love the community. So we can do our presentations, we can be part of conversations. We've been pre-COVID, we've been at so many on-site events. You can see some pictures. We even met Darth Vader at some point. We were in Munich, we were um, in, in Brussels, we were in Dublin, where actually Ian, uh, you can see him on the picture, the, on the one who was also um, preparing the Scottish Summit today is here in the picture with us. So many events we, we actually already could have with the community. And so we want to give back always something a little bit for each event. And if you have a close look at those pictures, you can see they have something in common. So it's all smiley, happy people, of course, that's what they have in common, but also something else. There is a Lego on each of those pictures. And we also and we also always have a Lego as a giveaway, and we have one for you today as well. So we can see on the next slide you have the chance to win actually really cool Lego camper van set. All you have to do is scan this QR code, so have your phone ready, or just type in um, the the link which you see here on in your browser. Answer the questions, but be a bit patient if you already want to answer the questions now. There might be a hint somewhere on the way, so pay close attention to what we're actually showing to you that you can really win this. Um, but so much about that introduction, Johannes, what do they actually have to pay attention, or should they actually pay attention to today? Can you tell us a bit more? What's the plan? Yeah, thank you, Lisa. So yeah, what, what's, what's the plan for the next uh, probably 35 minutes? So we want to give you an introduction to document automation. What are the challenges? Why do you need it? And yeah, if, if done right, how can it make life a lot easier? And yeah, this of course is also going to introduce you to Docs42. And all of the things that we cover in those slides, we want to prove to you in an extensive live demo. So Lisa will show you a lot. I will show you some parts of this. And of course, if at any time you have any questions, just feel free to put them in the chat. Um, we either hope to see them in, in, in the panel, or if not, we can cover them in, in, the, in the end. But yeah, so much for the, for the content for today. The question before starting with the session, do you know Docs42? So, well, in this session, you will always also get to answer some questions yourself. For this, we've prepared a Microsoft form. So if you either scan the QR code here, or maybe I can just try to copy the link as well. We will be able to see some responses here. Oh, there's more coming in. That's good. Not yet. 
Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I missed the share button again. Some more and more coming in. Okay, so, so the tendency, I guess, is clear. Is it's not yet. Um, so yeah, then it's always interesting for us. You know, we we are present at many conferences to see. Oh, there's more coming in. More not yet. So it's always nice to see um, where where we are in terms of the knowledge of Docs 42. So what's what's the the core of the product? And it's going to be document automation. And what are the challenges when it comes to it? And usually, there's a one that's very simple. Um, if we cover, for example, CD, CE today, CE will most likely not be your only system. So you will have other systems, such as in many cases, also like Dynamics is basically the modules are moving up. So it might be that it's it's fine and simple operations. CRM, of course, CE is today, but the, the topic then Business Central, SharePoint, Teams, SQL databases, or also maybe some Excel lists. And at the end of the day, generate tons of reports from this. And Docs42 can at the same time integrate a lot of different data sources while providing a lot of output options and formatting those in Office, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. If we have a look into the document generation and document creation in, in real life business, what are the challenges and how, how, do you, how do we see it with most customers if they start with Docs42 or before they start with Docs42? And the three are, quite similar in, in many organizations. So you have the copy paste guy, uh, which of course is individual, but it takes a lot of time to, for example, take the, the, the quotes in ex example, what Lisa mentioned already. So basically from six to eight, you, you design the perfect quote for the customer as it's your brand to the customer, but it's a lot of time. And of course you can make errors. Then the semi automation moves more into the direction of VBA macros, or maybe also some, some apps that you use for this. They usually are very helpful for those that know them, but if that person, for example, leaves that organization um, and you want to change something, it's basically a dead end in terms of being able to flexibly change to business requirements. And the last one, if you own not only work with CE, but also if you work with AX or similar tools, you are familiar with the SSRS way of doing documents, and that's very programmatically. So, yeah, you can do design in IT if you want to, but of course, business users know what should be in their documents, so it's very handy to have them for that. The technical options, when you bring that basically way of, of doing documents into the Microsoft platform, um, there's an overview we've prepared for you where you see in Office on the very left-hand side, um, like up here, it's very easy to do the, to do the individual part. On the other hand, if you do it with apps or if you do it with SSRS, is the more programmatic way, but in semi-automated or in many cases then completely automated. And we try to basically bring the best of all these words together. So you have the, the office for the design in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. You have many different data sources and you have a server on premise or in the cloud to generate your documents from wherever it's needed and whatever system it should be generated from. One, or well, I promise it's the only marketing slide I will show you today, but it's, I guess, a very important one if you, if you consider the processes of document automation. If you have a document automation process, let's say again, the quote from CE, you have, of course, IT involved because data is coming from CE. You have the business involved. They know what should be in their quote. And you have marketing involved because the code document should be in the, in the correct CI. And if in the Docs42 process, you consider this, you have the IT that will basically have the data in, in CE ready anyway. Um, the designers can use their office document, drag and drop fields into their document. At marketing, if the logo changes, if colors change or anything, they can adapt that in, in an office document as well. Some information about us. So we are currently have around 400 customers. We service customers through partners. So that is why we have around 100 partners with our headquarters in Vienna. Yeah, and if you have a look into those um, reference cases down below, basically what this should tell you is there is no limit in terms of the, the industry. So there's many, many different customer cases in basically all industries. We have some insurances, banks, we have ABB manufacturing, same for Liebherr or maybe German Railways, Deutsche Bahn, also rings a bell for some of you. And yeah, that 
the process of using Docs42 in an organization um, is usually quite the same for many customers. So you start with a scenario, but since you're not on an island, so you're not in CE only, you can flexibly grow in the organization. And if we take the case of ABB, for example, they started with their sales and service platform. But of course, in an organization such as ABB, you also have other requirements, such as contracts or other documents in other systems. And they were able to leverage the potential of Docs42 in CE, but also in other applications. The very same applies to professional service. So if you are a partner that has this, or this could be a case for, for some of your customers, you will also see that this could work internally, or if you are if you are in, in professional services and you want to automate your PowerPoints, for example, um, yeah, you also well have a case both as a partner or as a customer. The last one that I'd like to show you is um, in retail and food, and the reason is very simple. Also, in challenges that we face nowadays with with COVID and with basically business processes needing to adapt to all digital processes. Um, there's a good example of, of Transcomé, for example. So they had a workflow. If you withdraw products from the markets, they were able to basically produce a, a workflow that at some point uses Docs42 for the document generation, for logistic documents in this case. Um, yeah, and the same for, for Reva in this case with an ERP integration. Where in a business process, it's not necessary that a user manually clicks somewhere, but it's automated. So much for the business part, let's jump into the technical details. So of course, there is the office in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint to design those documents. You see um, that there is the left-hand side with, uh, with a template format in, in Word. So this is a standard doc export, for, for example. And in a business process, let's, let's, for example, imagine this would come from a business unit. In the IT, you just drag and drop those fields into, consider the amount of time you need to invest, to basically drag and drop and program at this um, for, for the organization. We a couple of mentioned a couple of times we've mentioned that there are many data sources you can integrate into such a document. And yeah, of course, on the right hand side you see dynamics with CE. Our question now to you, if you have a look into SQL, Web Service, SharePoint or Teams, for example, SAP, also the other dynamics modules. What technologies are you interested in? Because the live demo, it will be very individual on what you are focusing on. So I will again show you the question. There we are. For this one, and let's just move here and share this with the QR code. Okay. See, oh, also somebody from, from Finance and Liberations, SharePoint, SharePoint Teams. Yeah, Make, makes sense. I, because I like strategic, strategically, I guess also the event is, is quite proof to this. Microsoft is kind of like helping us to move, use different modules at the same time. And that's kind of like the way where we go. Also web service. Also very interesting, of course. So if you have some O data, REST, uh, or SOAP data sources, and those might be some individual applications you want to combine with CE, that's also something that's possible within Docs42. Yeah, and at the end of the day, not to have just one tool for document automation in CE or maybe with your web services, but use the same for both. Cool, thanks for answering those questions again. If we dig a little deeper into the way it's then used by the designer, we have the Docs42 data map designer. This is something we, of course, will cover in the live demo, where there's all the different data sources you can combine at the same time, and basically with drag and drop, integrate into such a document. The data can be very complex, so it's not just string or text data easily, so it can be basically images, conditions, barcodes, dynamic tables, um, yeah, and all of this at the same time also with integrating sub-documents. One part that I didn't mention before is the charting. So you can integrate charts into documents. And basically, if you, for example, have the sales figures from the last 12 months based on the filter, on the data, uh, you can visualize that within a PowerPoint, within a report um, to, yeah, for example, have a scheduler that each Monday this is going to, 
to be delivered to some management people that not necessarily are the Power BI guys. Of course, if the Power BI guys, um, if you want to dig deeper in this, it's kind of like a, a cool case to have both options. So far, we mentioned the input side. What about the output side? So the Docs42 service itself can also, if you trigger Docs42, for example, from CE, with that document, you can either just open it as a Word, Excel, or PowerPoint document, as a PDF document, or you can also have a process that automatically saves them into SharePoint. Well, SharePoint, of course, links to Teams, emailings, um, whether you send it out through the, through the mail part. And in many cases, also these output options are integrated into some business process. So something we will also show you later on is that Docs42 can be within a flow and Power Automate triggered from a Power App, or if you just add a new item, but not only Flow or the standards of Microsoft. So if you have any of the others here, like Firestar, Nintex, or K2, there is customers that already use this integration for document automation as part of a business process here. Enough of the talking. Lisa, what's the plan for the live demo? Yes, so we've prepared a lot. So now let's move from the theoretic part to the proof part where we're going to prove you actually that all of this, what we promised you, uh, works live um, as well. So what have we planned? We're going to start in Dynamics CE. We're going to generate sales documents. We're going to have a sales quote, but also an account plan as a presentation. I'm going to show you how you can also collaborate and do that with Teams and Power Automate. We will show you, of course, the template design, and then we will show you some more things you can do with Docs42. So not just CE, but also integrating SharePoint, uh, working with finance and operations, and so on. Good. So take the sc screen is yours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> screen is my mine. For the moment, so happy to see you in a, in a couple of seconds again. Bye bye. Perfect. Yes. So my screen is on and I'm straight in my dynamic CE. And what I, I, I mentioned to you in the beginning, we're going to start with the sales sales quote. So we are now in the business process that we are working with customers. We're working with a client of us and they are interested in purchasing our products and they want to have a quote. And in our example, we are selling solar panels. Um, our customer's adventure CEO, Michaela, is our contact at the customer and we are the Solar Power Deluxe. So we have here a quote with some information. We have three products. We have solar panels, we have a panel holder and a battery. And now we need to set up the quote. But of course, solar panels, they are quite a complex product and it's a complex project. We had a whole team working on getting us up to the stage where we're actually able to create a quote. So that also means that just a simple document that lists those three products in a table won't be enough. We really need a good quote, a compelling quote, so that our customer is convinced to purchase. And so basically I mentioned that we had a few people involved in a project already with some information they need to provide for the quote. So what we have done now, we gave the people an opportunity, the project team to contribute to the quote, which we cannot all just picture and add to CRM. It wouldn't make sense for all like details to put them in, into the CRM. So what we have, we have our quote here, but here you can see our quote ID and we actually set up within SharePoint, we set up a, a folder with actually our um, our ID. So basically, this is the same ID. And here in this folder, everyone had the opportunity of the project team to upload the information and the documents that are relevant for the quote. So what do we have? We have someone that is actually has set up a cover letter. They have put up if there's even enough sunshine hours that it makes sense to purchase uh, solar panels. So that's a Word document. We want to have that included. Then we have some people from the technical department. They are not working directly with CRM. They are just working with, with, an, with an Excel where they say, okay, I guess the installation of the solar panels five hours might be 
eight hours we're needing and they just set up that Excel and uploaded that, of course, to be included to the project, customers' um, costs. And then we have a picture that's actually a PowerPoint slide of the connection plan so the, the customer knows how to actually install it. And then we have an advertisement for um, which we're also going to add to the presentation, uh, to the quote. And then me as the salesperson, I'm responsible for delivering the quote and for setting up the quote. And um, all I need to do right now is, I don't need to manually just put it together, copy paste. I can use Docs42 for that. And I can do that here with my CE. So I can just, for the beginning, just return a PDF quote. And I click that button now in my CRM and now Docs42 is generating my quote for me in the background automatically. It's pulling in information from here and also from my SharePoint. So if we have a look and we can see, great, this is going to adventure CO. We have our Word document added here, the first one which we've seen. It's looking great. We have our uh, we have our products from our CRM with pictures. We have a discount here. We have our Excel. You can see eight hours, so that was added here. And down on the last page, we have a PowerPoint and also um, another Word document like this um, this advertisement. So. It's actually looking great, and I will be ready to send out the presentation, uh, the, the sales quote, but now I'm thinking about it. Hmm. So we're actually here at Scottish Summit, and we give like a super March deal, deal for, um, for this electric car, but wouldn't it be cooler to make, it, to make the quote even nicer for the Scottish Summit? So I'm going to make some changes and then regenerate the quote again. Basically, I want to have a better advertisement, I want to have an advertisement actually for a cool uh, Lego camper van set. So I'm going to adjust that. And I have a picture of my Lego set, which I'm going to just going to copy and put into my my Word document here. I'm going to make a really nice deal. And yeah, I'm going to say this can go. And instead, I want to say, and you can, I'm going to put that here. And I can say, Win the Lego set by filling out our form. So this is actually a change I want to make to make everything more more personalized for you. And it's a simple Word document, which I'm so here it is. This is just a simple Word document which I have stored on my SharePoint. And I can close that now. And then I can go back to my CRM and I say, OK, now I have the updated, um, the, all my updated information. So now I can generate my quote again. But now I know how it looks like if I just return it as a PDF. I'm going to have a look at it because I want to send it to my customer. I'm going to create a draft email, which is the quote in the attachment, so I can see actually how um, how the changes looked like. Good. And then here, now I have a draft email for my customer. So that's all the information from CRM. Here I have my quote ID and, uh, and like a te te text, which I could actually add some more information to. I would be like, you are the best customer. I can add that here. And then later send out the email and I can check again that in my attachment, I have my document and here we can see we have 
the Lego set, which we can win now instead of the other advertisement that is added. Great. So I really like that. And now I can actually uh, just really finish off and close my quote. But there's one thing I still want to change. I see there's a 7% discount, but today I'm really nice and I want to change it to 10% to make the customer really, really purchase and to make them a great offer. So what I'm doing now is I say the discount should be 10% and I'm saving the document and then I'm going to send the quote straight away, away this time per email to my send the PDF via, via email to the customer so they will have it directly in their inbox. I don't need to change anything. Um, anymore and they will have it there. So in the background again Docs42 is generating the PDF, it's also generating an email and sending it straight to the customer and we're gonna have a look at that email, how that looks like and we can see here the email that was sent just right now at this time and in the attachment we have the quote document again. Good. So those are just a few options. And actually, what has happened also in the background, I have changed everything here. I've changed the discount and then I sent out the email with a click. But what has happened that in the background also uh, a Power Automate was triggered that has actually generated the document for me again with the changes and saved it on my SharePoint. So I will have a look in my SharePoint. I have my, my sales quote documents and then we can see um, that we also have a document generated and saved. Here we can see about a minute ago that the document was added and stored to my SharePoint, including metadata. Good. So that's an example if you want to generate something based on a Word document. But then you could also, of course, do that for presentations. So if you, for example, have an a custom you're, you're working a lot with, it's a key account, you need to know all the contacts, you want to have like a good overview also like uh, for uh, the, the board of directors that they, that they know everything, all the details about the customer, the risk and so on, you might want to generate an account plan, PowerPoint presentation. And you can also do that with Docs42. I'm now in my accounts entity. I can open it from CE, but of course, this would also work from field service. That will be the same. And now, once again, I have some buttons here. I could save them straight away to SharePoint, so that would work with Autoflow as well if I trigger it here. Or I can just say create an account plan. And I want the English version of that. I could have also had the button for that for German. My account plan, you see that it was generated also really fast. It was downloaded here. That's an automated PowerPoint presentation. And it's including information about its contoso. We actually have some information that's coming here from CRM. We have a contact list that's actually sorted and also formatted if it's managers or employees. We have here a risk level, so they are at high risk, better that we don't uh, sell them anything at the moment. And then here we also have our account manager and some information on that. Just for you to know, you can also automate PowerPoint, PowerPoints from here. Good. And this is how you can work with Docs42 from a CE perspective or from, from a Dynamics perspective. And this is when I work on, on it myself. But if I, for example, want to enhance collaboration, if I want to have like my sales team to be even more in the loop of what is happening, like have I generated the quote yet? Um, what's the status on it? I can also work with Docs42 document generation from Microsoft Teams. And I can show you that from here, that here, for example, we have a sales team and we have different tabs on here and then 
um, I could actually um, discuss uh, with my with my team's team about the status of my projects, the sales proposals, and so on. What is sent and what is not, so they can always see what's happening. And what I can also do is I can also generate my document here from within Microsoft Teams. So I don't need to switch windows anymore. I don't need to log into CRM or anything. I can do all of that within Teams and generate my documents from here. Um, and of course, um, I could also then afterwards view my documents, which I actually store um, in here. So the connection is a little bit slow. So what I'll do instead of generating it, so you, we, we actually have, have buttons up here, here the same buttons that allow you to generate the documents. But what I'm um, showing you right here is that you can not just generate the document, but also open it from here and work with your documents from Teams so that really fosters collaboration on your business processes and documents. Good. And then, of course, very important next to the collaboration and working with the generated document, how does actually the template look like? And I'm just going to quickly show you how you can work with templates, how a Docs42, for example, sales code template looks like. What, I, what we are doing is we're actually managing the templates from SharePoint. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to open a template from here. Of course, I could also, we have here a Teams for the templates designers. So here again, you could collaborate and manage your templates from Teams, but I'm going to stick to SharePoint and I'm going to show you our sales code template. Oops, that was a bit too fast a click. And And then we will see for the quote, which I've generated the PDF, that we also, that we now have the template. And instead of all the data we've seen, we have a lot of those blue placeholders, which we call Docs42 data fields. And those data fields, they are filled with data in our example from CE and SharePoint, but that could also be with data from other sources. And now I double clicked on one of those fields. And now my data field explorer opens and I can see where my field comes from. So I see, uh -huh, this comes from organizations and it's a dynamic data source and the field is called name. So that's going to be the customer name. Or here the name, this one comes from SharePoint and we've inserted it as a type Word document. So that was the first Word document. And to show you some more, here up here you have the ribbon with all the functionalities, the Docs42 add-in. And I can always, and I'm going to do that now, I'm going to generate a document locally. So if I want to have a look, if I make some changes to the template, I'm always generating it here within my work. I say, please take my solar panels quote from CRM. So I can choose live, which, uh, which uh, quote I actually want to load. And then it's returning my document to, to me here in Word. And then just uh, for another minute, I'm going to show you how the, the template design actually works. So here we have the generated document, the one we've, we've seen also from our dynamics directly already. And we can see that, for example, here this block turned into the address that we can see that down here this field turned into the Word document or down below we can see a dynamic table. So we have, we have our lines for our product, uh, for our table only once, but here we have three lines. So the table expands automatically with our automate range functionality. So here we say, okay, please take everything here and repeat for my, my data source. So here, repeat everything for the order information. 
So that's one thing. We have a repeated section here. And then here we actually have a condition. So you can see in the template we have a the freight amount, but uh, here we don't have the freight. So here we can also again see with automate range that we've added a condition. And then here we say this whole area, the freight should only be inserted if the freight amount is not empty. Apparently it was empty, so it wasn't inserted. And there are many, many more things about the template design, which we can, which we can of course, show you also in a separate, um, uh, in a separate demo. Just one more thing, actually, where did that do, does my data come from? We have the data map design where you can connect just all the ones which we've mentioned in the theoretic part already in the slides. And we can see here we have dynamics data sources, we have SharePoint, but we would have FO, BC, and others, and even more to choose. But if you want to know more, of course, we can make an individual demo for you. And that's how working with Docs42 looks like when you generate documents from CE. Uh, but Johannes, can you show us also how it works like from SharePoint uh, um, or in, in other tools, if we have, an, if we have enough time left? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I hope so. Everything should be fine. Um, I hope you can see and hear me again and also my screen. Yes. Perfect. It's like it's like having those two screens is kind of like being in, in an inception as the presenter. <laughs> but it's it's nice that, the, um, that all is good. Perfect. OK, so the, the scenario we chose to show you the transition from CE to SharePoint is going to be an employee contract. And the first Thing on this part is going to be within CE. So if I jump into here, there are again well, two options. The first one we've already seen multiple times is going to be in a contract in as a PDF that I can download basically locally. But also I want to show you a transition. Right. It's an employee contract. One thing that we didn't mention yet, I guess, um, is that also automated table of contents um, also works with based on the header. So also if you integrate a document into a document, that works fine. And in here, we also have some complexity in terms of um, conditions like Lisa has shown. The output option that I'd briefly like to show you is an integration with DocuSign. So basically not sending this as an email right away or not sending this as a, as a draft email, now it's opening a draft email, but sending this via DocuSign. And in that very moment, it basically leaves the spheres of Docs42. And once again, well, you, you, by now you should already know Michaela Mitarbeiter, which is German for employee. She's basically our employee to demo everything. And in here we have a, an employee contract that we, we send out via DocuSign. And I, as the new employee, I, as Michaela in this case, get the document. I will be able to review this. Yeah, and then basically DocuSign integrates all of the what DocuSign does, if you're familiar, and you have another example of a great business process. To show you how this could also work within SharePoint as the, the data source, but also as the one that's triggering this, what I'd like to do briefly is going to generate a contract. One question to the our session is uh, we can do it until 45, is that right? So just to, to not ex exceed the time by, by a lot. Perfect. Thank you, Norm. And I really liked your, your statement about the Lego. <laughs> Um, speaking of the chat, what I'd like to do is um, do a quick example of an employee contract to the first person commenting whatever in the chat, not like literally whatever, or just post anything in the chat. Um, might have a delay on the on this, but if if I'm just going to take you norm then. Ah, oh, there's 15 seconds delay, all right.
Paul, uh, Paul, good to see you in the session. Dynamics.com, that's something I just take fictional, whatever there is. You will be hired this time as a, I'm sorry, trainee, but you will get unlimited of everything. Make it bigger. Save it. Yeah, and one thing that we've seen multiple times now is that there's the option to trigger a flow from this. So there will be a, a document automatically saved to this. I will just to show you both ways. Also in here again, do it as let's do a save it. And of course, all the variables we have as input also will lead to the output. So basically, in our all contracts library. All right, so this hasn't run through yet. But yeah, you, as you, we've shown multiple times now, you, I hope you trust that this is also going to be there in a couple of seconds. Um, before we have the hard cutoff, what I'd just briefly like to show you is a generation from finance and operations as an invoice, original preview as the last one, part of the live demo. And similar to everything you've seen today. So again, we have the template in SharePoint, we have the trigger from, in this case, finance and operations. We have the output in the system directly. Still, everything we've shown you today was done with one service. So also even like the, the whole case today would be from, from technically possible with one service in terms of that. Cool. Let's finish with a summary. All of this, um, I hope you have seen in, in the session. And of course, yeah, <laughs> just looking into the, in the into the chat now. I really like that you engage, so that's great for us. If you want to engage with us directly, um, well, there is the option. Q and A is a little short today, but we have a contact form on our homepage. So there is docs42.com/contact. If you want to go for a free trial, if you want to see a demo from us directly, also in some of the applications we've mentioned today, and of course, once again, here's the Lego. So whoever wins the Lego, what I'd really, really like to have is whenever you get it and whenever you build it up, send us a picture either via LinkedIn or via Twitter. So that's something we want to have proof of. You, you can really do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, here are our contact details. Like we said, this is the way to go if you want to get in touch with us directly. Visit docs42.com slash contact. And I guess we will have a hard cutoff at 45. If there's still anything you want to ask, the chat is still open before the hard cutoff happens. If there's anything else, here are the emails. Thanks a lot. It was great fun. Also, Lisa, thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, stay in touch with us. So fill out the form for the Lego. Contact us at, at info, add us on LinkedIn, whatever. We would be happy to, to stay in touch with you and hear how you enjoyed the session. Yeah, have great fun with all the other great sessions today. All right, then. Bye-bye. All the best from Austria. Bye-bye. <laughs>